This is the how-to video to make your current chicken door automatic using AutomaticChickenCoopDoor.com products. When you get your automatic chicken coop door, you'll open it up and it should look something like this. You'll have your timer, your power cord, here's the whole unit. You'll have that and it includes your screws and all the sets of directions. You should read over all these directions so you understand what's going on and a separate one for the timer. This unit obviously does not have a door sent with it. It is just the external mounting box that you can mount above a flap door. And this will be adjacent to the flap door to lift it automatically. To start, you will want to flip the unit on either of its sides and you'll need to take out the screws that are located on each side of it. After doing this, the inside part will slide out and this is just the shell that goes over it that you can paint or stain and it won't hurt the door. This can be completely painted. And then here's the actual part with the motor inside of it. And you want to start by sliding this out of the unit. Set that to the side. And this is the part that you are going to mount to your door. I have an already built flap door on this coupe and I wanted to make it automatic so I'm going to mount this part of it above the door and I can put it as high as I need to. I think I'm going to put it about right there. It's about where I want it. So right now I'm going to uh, drill right into these pre-drilled holes that came inside the unit already and I'm just gonna screw it right to my wall. You now can slide the motor back inside the unit. should fit right in there. Now that you have this on, you need to set the actuators, which the actuators are the black dials that are on the front side of the motor. The first thing you'll want to do is to plug in the motor so that the string lets all the slack out of the line so you can adjacent it to the bottom of your flap door. And you do this by plugging it into the small hole that's directly underneath of the motor and the line will come out and there should be about three feet of line now with all the slack out you could take this piece or if you wanted to break this off and make a pre-drilled hole in the bottom of your door you can thread the string through there and tie your knot but I'm just going to leave this on here I'm going to screw it right to the bottom of my door right there using the two smaller screws that were in the packaging. Now that I screwed that to the bottom of the door, there's slack in the line right here as you can see. And we want to get rid of that so when the door goes down all the way there's not slack. To fix this, the easiest and simplest way is to unplug the motor for just about two seconds. And then as soon as you plug it in, the motor is going to begin operating and reeling in the string right before it gets to the point where it tightens up the line where there's just about a half inch of slack I'm going to unplug it and set my actuator. I'm going to keep a little bit of tension on it so that it doesn't make slack in the line and I unplugged it right there which is a tiny bit of uh, slack in the line where it's not too much and now I'm going to go over to my actuator and you can see the switch right now is flipped to the right. The switch right now is flipped to the right. So that means when this actuator gets all the way, right now this actuator is coming to flip this switch. So once this actuator gets all the way up here and flips the switch, it'll begin going the opposite direction. So this is the all the way down point then, because we just plugged in the motor. So I'm going to move this all the way right here. And now the door will never unreal the motor past this point so it'll never let any more slack come out than what's right here. Now when I plug in the motor it's going to begin reeling the door up. When it reaches the point that I want it to stop and I don't want it to be any higher I'm going to unplug it immediately so that it does not reel the door up too far.
and I'm going to want it to stop right there. So it reels my door up to that point and then stops. Now that I have the door up to the, where I want it to stop at, I unplug the door. And right here, it still has not flipped this switch, so I'm going to turn this actuator by itself, not touching this one, until it flips that switch. Now it will never go beyond this point. So when I plug in the door, it'll go all the way down to the first setting we set. And then when I unplug it and plug it back in, it'll come all the way back up to the second setting that we made. And now it's coming back up. It's going to stop at the setting that we made. All right, now that we have the actuator set, we can unplug this. And we could put our shell on. Careful, it gently goes over that string. Then we can put our screws back into the sides to hold the unit back on so no critters or anything can get into it. Okay, just put those on. Now the unit looks like this. And the only other thing I have to do is set the timer. To set the timer using the instructions that were included, we need to set the current time, which doesn't matter at this moment, but then we need to pull up all the tabs all the way around the unit except for two. So on this timer, I'm just going to push one in at 7 a.m. And I'm going to want the door, let's see, my chickens are normally in at about 8. 8.30, so I'm going to have the door closed at 9 just to make sure they're all in on the first night. I might come back and change it later. So I have one tab pushed in at 9 and one tab pushed in at 7. And now you want to make sure it's on the timer on option. Now when you plug this in, you want the motor to plug into the side of the timer. And then you will want to plug your timer into your power source. Okay, to test the door, I'm going to rotate the time now option around until it reaches one of those points and it should make the door operate when it clicks. That's how you set it.